happens every spring. The world is young again. We're children on an upsa-daisy swing. A carousel with horses freshly painted. The oompa-pa that says, let's get acquainted. What is that cheer I heard? A fella stealing bird. Your neighbor's boy became a home-run king. Your dad rolls up his sleeves to clean the attic. Your 16-year-old sister goes dramatic. It happens. Yes, it happens. It happens every spring. You simply can't miss your own senior prom, Debbie. Maybe he's never thought of one. Why don't you drop him a few hints? I've tried that. But Vernon just doesn't get hints. Well, I'll see you. Bye. Bye. Come on, Miss Collins. Dad busy? Very. Professor Forsythe is in there now. Chemistry Forsythe? Uh-huh. Ooh, I bet they're talking about Vernon. I have no idea what they're talking about. Well, I'll have to find out later. Vernon's waiting for me. Uh, give Dad a message, will you? Tell him I said not to be so nosy. Hello? Mr. Jack Bell? Just a minute, please. Will you talk to Mr. Jack Bell? Excuse me. Hello, Jack. Yes, yes, I got your letter. No, of course I won't speak. I'm trying to de-emphasize athletics, not glorify them. I know, Alfred. I know I'm waving a red flag in front of a bull, but one man we've invited might give you some dough for that new laboratory. Well, that sounds very interesting, Jack. I'd like to meet him. But uh, not at a football dinner. <laughs> well, goodbye. Now... That's what I want to talk to you about. What do you mean, Debbie? No, Simpson, Vernon Simpson. Well, what about him? Well, that's what I want you to tell me, Joe. I want to know all about him. Well, Vernon's a fine young man, brilliant scholar, serious, energetic. And his background? He comes from upstate somewhere. Has a widowed mother who's as poor as a church mouse. Well, why do you want to know, Alfred? Well, you saw why just now. Debbie seems to have taken quite a fancy to him. And uh, vice versa. Debbie couldn't have picked a better land. Incidentally, he's my candidate for director of the research laboratory. Simpson? Yes, I intend to submit his name to you and the board. Uh, that is, as soon as he completes his doctorate. But he's no youngster, Joe. He should have had his PhD years ago. Well, he spent three years in the South Pacific uh, chemical warfare. And before that, he worked on a number of other ideas. And he, uh, well, he's just had bad luck. You being absolutely honest with me, Joe, are you sure there's nothing else? Yes, there is something, Alfred, but... What is it? Women? No, no, it's just these phases that he goes through. Phases? What do you mean, phases? Well, from October to April, Vernon is alert, conscientious, and an excellent teacher. But every spring, he seems to undergo a peculiar change. He becomes absent-minded to a degree. It's like uh, spring fever, only it lasts all summer. Been around our house quite a bit lately. I haven't noticed these symptoms. It's past the middle of April now. Yes. Oh, he's been fine all winter, Alfred. Only this is just the time of the year. Uh, I'm expecting it to hit him almost any time. It happens every spring. Continuing our study of the general group known as acids, we're now coming to a very important classification. The most striking difference between the various acids containing the carboxyl group lies in their acidic strength. Or we might say they are ionization constants. Some fairly active, while others are quite inert. Oh. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> to illustrate, I have in this test tube acetic acid. Like many others of a similar type, it's a rather weak acid of low Ka value. By adding methyl orange, you'll notice the bright pink color, which tells us that acetic acid, though weak, is decidedly is decidedly first home game of the season here in St. Louis. Moore gets a signal from Lanigan. He takes a stretch. He throws. Ball one on Hartman. Manager Dolan looks worried. Here he comes out of the dugout. He doesn't want to lose this game. Uh, decidedly an acid, as your knowledge of domestic vinegar might... Uh, uh, I'm afraid I'll have to continue this discussion the next time. What is it, Vernon? Don't you feel well? Oh, I feel fine, just fine. I... What was it? You acted so strangely. You suddenly looked as if you were a thousand miles away. No. No, only 68. I, I mean, I was thinking about something else. I... Was it me, Vernon? No, no. Vernon? Yes? I was thinking about it while you were lecturing. I know you're shy and reserved and all, and I've tried to make allowances, but... But what? Well, don't you understand? I guess I know how you feel, but just guessing isn't very satisfying. I mean, well... Well, you're so terribly vague. Oh, but I'm not, Debbie. I'm not a bit vague. I'm very definite about you. Why, well, you're almost everything I ever think about. Almost? What else can I say? Something concrete, Vernon. Something positive. Oh, but that's been out of the question up until now. I hardly make enough at my job to live on. And your father, for instance, he's made it quite clear that for anyone in my present financial situation to even discuss the... But, Vernon... But I'm serious, Debbie. That's why I can't say anything. Because if a man is really serious, he doesn't have the right to say anything until he can be serious. Vernon, what are you talking about? I'm talking about three hours from now, maybe sooner, maybe any minute. And what's going to happen three hours from now? In less than three hours, I'll know about my experiment. You mean you've done it? Just about. Oh, darling. I'm so happy. I haven't told you the best part. I just heard about it myself yesterday. My nitrocyclohexane compound will have great commercial value. We can buy a house, maybe even own a car. Oh, that's wonderful. But who's going to pay you all this money? The Norworth Laboratories. It seems they've been working along the same lines for years, trying to develop a substance that will keep insects or any living matter away from wood. They're biophobic, they call it. And they seem to think that my compound is the very thing they're looking for. Vernon Simpson, the man who discovered the biophobic. Of course, I'd have to test its effectiveness on wood, but that's just routine. Well, let's not stand here talking about it. Let's go find out. Can't expect any positive results right away. Oh, but we can look. Hallelujah, there it is, the white precipitate. Sure enough, there it is. Oh, congratulations, Vernon. <laughs> oh, my notebook. My notebook. goes everything. Just when I had it. Oh, Vernon. Little brats. No degree, no job, no nothing. You still have your notes and everything. It can't take long. Long? You don't understand, Debbie. Well, one of those compounds alone took five weeks to crystallize, and they're all in sequence. I can't make the second till I finish the first. And look at these notes. You might get some idea of the, of the time and work it took. Why well, I ran some of those reactions six and eight times before I get enough stuff to make the next step. Now I'm going to start from scratch. Do it all over again, step by step. It'll take months. That wonderful precipitate. It's all there in the sink. Isn't there any way you could filter it out and save oh, it? Oh, that's just a hodgepodge of compounds and ice and everything else now. You couldn't even figure out what's in there. I don't filter anything out. Well, I suppose I'd better clean up this mess. 
can't I help? No, dear, you just run but along. But Vernon... Darling, there's nothing you can say and there's nothing I can say. Oh, Vernon. This hasn't changed anything as far as we're concerned. You know that. It's changed everything. Darling, you mustn't feel that way. Let me talk to you. Please, dear, right now. All I... right. I'll see you later. And that puts Chicago out front four to nothing. And here comes Hank Rubella. He's the third pitcher Dolan's used today. Jimmy doesn't look happy out there. Pitchers are his big headache. St. Louis has a great team, good hitting and fielding. And with one more top-notch pitcher, Dolan might cop that pennant. Owner Edgar Stone would like to buy one for him, too. But first-class pitchers are scarcer than hen's teeth this year. Stone can't buy one for love nor money. Astonishing. We're Schmidt and Isbell, sir. You sent for us? Oh, yes. Yes, so I did. You gentlemen are doing rather sadly in organic chemistry. I suppose you're aware of that. Yes, we are, sir. Well, I don't like to flunk you. You're both on the baseball team, so I had assigned some special reading. But instead, I thought I might be able to give you some pointers to see if we can't improve your grades. Say, that's mighty decent of you, sir. And in return, I was wondering if you'd do something for me and keep it strictly confidential. Sure, we'd be glad to, Mr. Simpson. Certainly, sir. Good. Well, you meet me on the baseball field at the batting cage with your uniforms and equipment at 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock? In the morning. Now, if you'll just get some chairs, we'll get started. 
Now, your basic trouble is that you haven't learned the meanings of technical terms. So let's get clear what we mean by methyl, ethyl, propyl. <clears throat> Perhaps I'd better warm up a bit first. Okay, Professor. All right, here we go, right in here. So this is why he got us up at 5.30 in the morning, so he could play pitcher. Yeah, we can't really be nuts or they wouldn't let him teach. Yeah, well, it's one way of passing chemistry anyway. <laughs> yeah. huh? Shut up now, we gotta humor him. Hey, that's a good one. Now, if you'll step up, Mr. Isbell. Just a minute, Mr. Simpson. Okay, Mr. Simpson, now let's go in there. Let's have a little methyl, ethyl, propyl, and butyl on that ball. Here we go, hey! Whoa. Well, never mind, Mr. Simpson, we'll get him on this next one. Here we go. Too bad I didn't have an outfielder in my class. Now, if you don't mind, I think I'll try just a few more. Sure, if you want to, Mr. Simpson. Well, use your beam this time, will you, Tommy? Bunt one. Yeah, okay, okay. Wow, did you see the hop on that ball? That's a regular dipsy doodle you got there, Professor. How'd you do it? The result of a great deal of scientific research. <laughs> All right, now, here we go. That's the old pepper in there. Right down the old groove here. Here we go. Wow! That's making them hop in there, Professor, old boy. Hit one this time, will you, Tommy? You'll think you're faking. I ain't missing them on purpose. <laughs> Here we go, Professor. Right in there now. Thank you, gentlemen. I'm sure you've had enough. You hit three consecutive pitches, then you missed three in a row. Statistically, therefore, I've obtained all the information possible. Unless, of course, I've pitched several hundred more balls. Statistics. He got us up at five o'clock in the morning for statistics. Is Dr. Greenleaf up yet? Why, yes, sir, but I... I'm sorry to bother you so early, Dr. Greenleaf, but I have to make the 714. Oh. Is it an emergency, Vernon? Yes, sir. Illness, death in the family? Uh, no, sir, not that kind of an emergency. Well, what kind is it? Well, I have a wonderful opportunity, Dr. Greenleaf. It may not work out, but I'd like a leave of absence starting immediately. Uh, Mr. Richardson can finish my classes, and Miss Brinkhofer can take over my lab periods. Leave of absence? Uh, for how long? I don't know, sir. Indefinitely? You mean you want an emergency leave of absence to last indefinitely? No, I don't understand this, Vernon. Well, I'm afraid I can't explain it, sir. That is, I can, but scientifically I can't explain it at all. You mean it has something to do with your experiment? Yes, sir. But unless I get a chance to demonstrate it... Oh, you intend to give demonstrations? Uh, lectures of some kind? Well, no, not exactly. Well, what are you going to do? Take it to some commercial laboratory like the one you mentioned? What was it? Uh, uh... Norworth Laboratories. Well, then why is the time indefinite? Will you grant me the leave, Dr. Greenleaf? If I don't go now, I'll miss my train. I don't know, Vernon, it's most unusual, right in the midst of a semester, but if this is really such an extraordinary scientific contribution, I don't suppose we should stand in your way. Um, all right, Vernon, catch your train. I'll talk to Forsyth. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, is Debbie still asleep? Well, I presume so. Well, will you tell her I said goodbye and that she'll hear from me soon? Thank you, sir.
morning. I want to see Mr. Dolan, please. He won't see anybody on game day. Oh, but this is urgent. I know. Everybody's urgent. What do you want to see him about? Well, it's a personal matter. Well, he doesn't have anything to do with the concessions. Neither do I. Good morning, Mr. Dolan. Good morning. Oh, Mr. Dolan. Mr. Dolan, I want to talk Not to you. Today. But this is important, Mr. Dolan. This can mean a great deal to you. You heard what I said. Run along. I'm busy. Miss Mangelstein. I'm not asking for any money or any favors, Mr. Dolan. I'm trying to do you one. Then do it. Get out of here. Mr. Terry wants to know... Not this morning. I've got to go right down to batting practice. This wire from Denver. Hello? Yeah, yeah, I'll be right down. Uh, about this pitcher, Chop Suey or whatever his name is. Chop Suey. Chop Suey. Yeah, well, wire them I want him. Just a minute. Before you send this wire... Will you get out of here? No, I will not. Miss Mengelstein, send for one of the cops. I'm a pitcher, Mr. Dolan, and you need one very badly. Now, I can win the pennant for you. Oh, that's all I need this morning, another crackpot. I am no crackpot, and that's no idle boast. It's a simple mathematical fact. Look, I heard what you said, mister. But we don't hire ball players that way. Now, if you I just... I realize that, but the circumstances are rather unusual. I can win 30 games for you. 30 games? Is that all? Well, no, 30 is the minimum. Oh, I no, you're not very screwy. Do you know there ain't more than a dozen pitchers ever won 30 games in a season? Of course I do, and I can give you their names if you like. Never mind. Look, all I want to do is to show you. What can you lose? My lunch is all. Where is that cop? Mac, take this guy away. Yes, sir. Don't hurt his arm. He thinks he's Walter Johnson. You know, you're very stupid, Mr. Dolan. With a chance to win the pennant right in your lap. Get him out of here! Come on now, pal. You're annoying Mr. Dolan. You know, if you would shout less and think more... What's all the rumpus, Jimmy? I got another crank in here. Thinks he's a pitcher. Thinks he can win 30 games. You, I take it to Mr. Stone? Well, I appeal to your intelligence as an executive. Now, I'm perfectly rational and willing to prove the truth of anything I may say. All I want is a chance to demonstrate. Mac! How do these characters get in here? I walked in, Mr. Stone. I'm about to walk out again without a police escort. And when I do, the pennant walks right out the door with me. Come on, Sonny Jim. Take your pennant and trot along. Take a good look at me, Mr. Stone. All the other owners can't be pigheads. You'll see me later in the season. Just a minute, young man. So I'm a pighead, am I? You walk in off the street and think you can win 30 I games and just... I don't think so, Mr. Stone. I know it. Know it? I have never met such bland conceit. I told you, he's a crackpot. No, he's not. He's just a conceited jackass. All right, you talk to him. I'm going to batting practice. Batting practice, eh? I think we ought to teach this whippersnapper here a lesson. Then take him in your office and teach him anything you like, but let me go. No, not in my office. Down in the field. Let him pitch to the boys. Okay. It's your ball club. If you want to run a kindergarten for crackpots... Now, young man, you're going to have your wish. And you're going to get the humiliation of your arrogant young life. And I'm coming down to see it. I was hoping you would. Come on, nuisance. Get him a uniform, Jimmy. Yes, Mr. Stone. And we'll lay a red plush carpet for him from the dugout to the pitcher's box. Oh, just a moment. There's the uh, question of terms. Terms? Yes. Mister, I got to hand it to you. Thank you. Now, I want $1,000 a game for every game I win. Otherwise, not a cent. And when I win a game, I'm to be paid promptly. Now I have heard everything. Of course, I realize there's some rule about minimum salary, but I'm sure we can fix that up in the contract. Take him down there right away. And don't let him pitch to any weak hitters. Put the top of the batting order up. I'm really going to enjoy this. Hurry up, Busher. Monk, another dizzy Dean? He ain't got a prayer, Jimmy. Just dizzy, huh? Yeah? I thought so. Well, no wasting more time. Okay. He says, come on in.
Let me tell you, kiddo, this baseball racket ain't so hot so like you read about. It's got its crummy side, too. Dirty trains all the time, cheap hotels. If you change, though, I, I'm looking forward to it. Well, don't. You might be in for a letdown, see? Things don't always work out. You want to talk to him, Jimmy? Yeah. Hey, Jimmy. What about our genius? Can he throw as far as the plate? This is your idea. I'll show you. Get in there now and pitch. If he gets hurt, it's Stone's fault, not mine. I better catch for him, Jimmy. Catch what? They're going to hit every pitch. Remember, put the top of the batting order up. The top of the batting order! Roll the cage away. I'll catch this guy. Come on, kid. Let's show him what you got. Must have been an optical illusion. Let me see you throw that one again. What's this guy got anyway? I don't know. He didn't have nothing before. Now he's got a hop like Barnum's flea. This is getting monotonous, boys. Me and the kid is playing catch and you guys is fan in the air. Taught him a lesson, all right. No, he taught us a lesson, Jimmy. That's what makes baseball the greatest game in the world. Everybody plays it all over the country. You may find a new star anywhere. In the swamps of Louisiana, or the Rockies, or Brooklyn. Or he may walk right into your office the way this boy did. Yeah, we haven't got a star here yet. Not by a long shot. But the boy is a natural, Jimmy. He don't look like a pitcher. He don't throw like a pitcher. But he strikes them out. Yeah, he strikes them out in practice. But the big question is, can he stand up in big-time competition? Hey, you, come in. Say, uh, what's your name, anyway? Oh, I hadn't thought of it. Oh, you hadn't. Well, try hard. Well, it's Kelly. Kelly, eh? Wow. That's the first encouraging thing you've said. Come on, kid, let's take care of that flipper. Chicago staging another rally. They're whittling down St. Louis's lead. But Dolan's leaving Crosby in, so let's see what's going to happen. Chew? No thanks. Crosby better tighten up. He ain't got this game on ice yet. Jimmy, 
the new man in. Yes. Kelly. Warm up. Me? Yeah, you. Come on, kid, this may be it. Start steaming them in, baby. I got a feeling we ain't gonna have much time. Mr. Dolan, I'd like to get it straight about my contract. If I win this game, it counts for me. I expect to get paid. I don't pay. You go talk to Stone. Now? No, no. There's a ball game going on. Get in there and pitch. I'll talk to him later. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. What's this? Another Al Shack? We don't need no more comics with you around, sweetheart. Guy's name is Kelly. Kelly, pitching for St. Louis. Lanigan, catching. Kelly, now pitching for St. Louis. Lanigan, catching. Why, he isn't even on the scorecard. Well, sir, fans, there's a scared-looking rookie if I ever saw one. I wonder where Dolan ever got the courage to put him into a spot like this. run on second, and O'Leary's up. He's gotten three hits for three tries this afternoon. Look, kid, just take it easy. Try and get him over. I'm all alone back there, and they don't let me use no step ladder. Where did you find that hooligan? Jump in junior high? First get a hit off, and then make with the jokes. this ball game. Here's your chance to be a hero. This one's got to be good. You're right. You're out. Wow. What kind of a ball was that? Now, uh, tell me that joke about the high school kid. We're a great team, kid. Me and you, nice going. Thank you. Kids are gold mine, ain't he, Jimmy? It was just what you was looking for. I wasn't looking for a headache, but that's what I got. Headache? A guy with a hump like that? He's a screwball monk. He may do anything. You'll have to keep your eye on him night and day. 
Good work, young fellow. Great, great. I knew you had it all the time. Glad to have you with us. We'll have that contract for you first thing in the morning. Thank you, sir. And if there's anything I can do, be sure and let me know. Uh, oh, Mr. Stone, there is one thing. What? Well, could I have a uniform that fits? Sure, sure. Dolan! Dolan! Come in. Hiya, Kelly. Congratulations, kid. Your troubles are over. I'm moving in with you. You're what? I couldn't stand it, thinking of you up here all alone day after day. <laughs> well, I don't mind, Monk. Really, I don't. Listen, Kelly, I took a shine to you. It doesn't happen often, but when it does, the sky's the limit. I'm paying for everything. Room, laundry, meals. It ain't going to cost you a cent. Why, that's wonderful, Monk. I'd be glad to share the room with you, but I want to share the expenses, too. Yeah, baloney. No, I mean it, Monk, really. All right, I'll break down and tell you. I ain't one of those big-hearted Charlies like you think. It's uh, sort of a deal between me and the club. It's a what? A deal. I move in with you, they pay all the bills. They uh, sort of want me to keep my eye on you. They do? Why? Uh, Dolan thinks you're somewhat of a screwball or something. Are you, Kelly? Why, no, quite the opposite. Everything I do is perfectly logical. That's your girl? Wow, she is hot stuff. <laughs> Sweet-looking kid, too. What's her name? No, you wouldn't know her. Oh, cagey, eh? Well, I'll just call her Madame X. What's in the bottle? Oh, that, uh, that's hair tonic. It's a special prescription. Uh, seems to have done you good. Oh, yes. Yes, it has indeed. Analytical mechanics. Atoms, stars, and neb... Nebula. <laughs> Theoretical ballistics. Jumping Jupiter, do you read this stuff? Well, you see, it's that hop I get on the ball. It's caused by some unique phenomenon, and I'm attempting to investigate it. You mean you learned how to pitch out of scientific books? Well, no, not exactly. Jimmy was right. Where are you from, kid? Why all the mystery? Well, well, it's her father. If he ever finds out, I'll lose my girl and my job and everything. Finds out what? What I'm doing. I didn't think I could do it, but I am. And what I'm doing isn't what he thinks I'm doing at all. Come again? Well, I'm getting the one thing he wants me to have by doing the one thing he's most against, you see. Leave it go, Kelly. Quit trying. The more you talk, the more mysterious it gets. Well, maybe it's just as well. Hello? I'm Colonel Love, head of party by the name of Lanigan. It's for you, Monk. It's Mabel, checking up. <sighs> yes, Mabel. Monk, is that yes, you? I'm here, just like I said. And you're with Kelly, too, I suppose. Yes, I know, Mabel. There's lots of girls named Kelly, only he happens to be with the club. Yes, huh? Funny, I never heard you mention And St. Louis don't have no lady pitchers this season. You've never been married, have you, Kelly? No. Yes, Mabel. Hey, if you're such a scientist, you ought to read this article here. Some professor says there's gold on the planet Mars. Here. I'm glad I read this. I've got to send a telegram. A telegram? To Mars? Oh, but I can't do that. The guy is nuts. But I've got to do something. I've got to think of some way that... Now, wait a minute, Kelly. You listen to me. You're going to stay right here and pitch. You ain't going after no gold on Mars. And I don't think I'll... Hey, Kelly! Kelly! But nevertheless, I just want to tell you that I'm not Yes, Mabel, I've been listening to every word. I wish you'd come with us. The castle will do you good. I'm not in the mood, Mother, really. 
And you can't spend the rest of your life sitting home because of Vernon. She won't go ten feet away from that telephone. Oh, Miss Deborah Greenleaf. Oh, I'll take it. I'm Miss Greenleaf. A uh, sign here, please. Thank you. somewhere. He couldn't have come by it honestly. You have no right to say that. You don't know anything about it. I know he acted very strange. The day he left, he was vague and evasive. There must have been a reason. Oh, Vernon's always vague, and I don't think he meant to be evasive, Alfred. Uh, what does he say? Now, that's none of our business. Poor Vernon. He's really sweet. He's so upset because he didn't get to say goodbye to me. Now, what's he doing? I know that you will have faith in me and do what I ask without asking why I ask it. That's Vernon. He even writes double talk. I'm fine, and I haven't disappeared. But he has. Please call the police and tell them to stop their search at once. I cannot overemphasize the urgency of this. Why, well, that in itself is suspicious. My associates are rather rough and ready. But in their peculiar skill is a constant source of astonishment. Skill at what? How should I know? The work is strenuous and exciting, but the financial rewards are quite fantastic. Yes, they must be. Well, isn't that rather unusual for scientific demonstrations. It's not unusual. Whatever he's doing is not legitimate. I don't know whether I've chosen wisely in casting my lot with this particular group. But whether I have or not, the die is cast. Oh, dear. That does sound rather ominous, doesn't it? Certainly does. But I'm sure there's some explanation. Yes, the explanation's very simple. He's mixed up with some kind of a racket. Oh, Father, you've no right to assume that. He certainly got his leave of absence under false pretenses. I can't forgive him for that. Oh, now, wait, Alfred. I'm sure he'll clear it all up very soon. He says I won't hear from him for several months. Well, why not? He says it'll be too risky. Debbie, darling, I, I've always liked Vernon, but your father's perfectly right. This all sounds very strange and frightening. Of course, it may not be a real diamond, only glass. Father, of course it's real. Boxes from Marks. Well, I'm going into St. Louis tomorrow. I'll take it in and I'll... No, buy. you're not. Why not? Because I don't care if it's glass or not. I'm going to wear it. Just about made it. What are we expected to do? Get here early and polish the engine? Tobacco? Oh, thank you. He's getting old. He can't steal anymore. Yeah, and poor old Bush. Last week, the bums knocked him all over the lot. Yeah? I'm laying for him. We'll kill him. Come on, boys. Let's get on the train. Debbie? Debbie, I've just seen Vernon. He was taking a train for Chicago. He was with a lot of men. Oh, they were very tough looking, all of them. They looked like, well, you know, like gangsters. Oh, mother, gangsters? How do you know? No, you should have heard what they said. Oh, you must be wrong, mother. It may have looked like him, but I know it couldn't be Vernon. <laughs>
Cummings bearing down. Every pitch counts now. Last half of the ninth, one out. One more out is all Kelly needs to reach the heights. I won't tell you what those heights are. That is jinxing. You know the old baseball superstition. Nobody ever mentions what Kelly's trying to do. But the score is one and nothing for St. Louis. Slugging Sammy Lee is up. The tension among the crowd is terrific. They're going wild. Here comes the pitch. Strike! Strike one is called. A few weeks ago, Kelly was unknown. But tonight, he's trying for every pitcher's dream. But Lee means business. A hit here could break up this ball game. He's not giving away any presents, and neither is Kelly. Fight two, this is it. One more like that is all Kelly needs. He's done it. Kelly's done it. He's pitched a no-hit, no-run game. Come on, sweetheart, let's celebrate. Well, I'm kind of tired, Monk, and my arm's pretty sore. Ah, forget it, kid. This is our big night. Jimmy says we can have a glass of beer. All right. <laughs> Here he comes. Hey, Kelly. Hold it, Kelly. Hold it. 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 They can ruin you. Exactly. One recognizable picture in the paper, Look, and kid, I'll tell them no picture, see? But you got to talk to them. All right. Come on in, boys. Kelly's waiting. But no flash bulbs, see? No pictures. Uh, Where did Dolan find you, Kelly? What's your hometown, Kelly? Where'd you pitch hey, last gentlemen, year? Gentlemen, gentlemen, please, one at a time. Is it true that you're an ex-GI, Kelly? Yeah, what about it? Yes, yes, I was in the service. As a matter of fact, it was there that I developed my ability to pitch. I was stationed on a small island off in a corner of the Pacific, and the Army supplied our outfit with all recreational equipment, uh, mostly baseball gear. As a matter of fact, they sent enough for two full teams, although we were only ten of us on the island and hardly enough flat ground to put three shacks on. So, out of sheer desperation and boredom, I spent months pitching to another lad on a narrow strip of beach. And, of course, you know, if you spend that much time doing anything, you're bound to become quite skillful at it. What about before the war? Yeah. Before the war. Well, before the war, you see, my, my life was uh, extremely colorless and dull. And as a matter of fact, I'm really very tired tonight, gentlemen, so if you'll excuse me, I'll... Yeah, you boys got your story. Yeah. Come on, right, now, let's go. Yeah, it's a great game, Kelly. Hey, that sure was some yarn you handed them, sweetheart. <laughs> I sure got to give it to you. <laughs> Thanks. Strangely enough, it happens to be true. Hey, Monk, you want it on a telephone, long distance. That's Mabel.
How's the arm, kid? Well, it's still pretty sore, Monk. I told you not to walk around with your arm bare like that after I rubbed it. You gotta keep it warm. But I'm gonna shave. You're gonna put a sweater on right now. I don't own one. Then you'll wear mine, see? Here, put it on. Go on, get into it. You know you're pitching today, you silly cluck. Yes, I know. If I don't suffocate first, I just pay me to shave with a turtleneck sweater. I don't know. Hey, today's the second. I forgot. I gotta go downtown. We'll stop on the way to the field. No. This is something personal. I I I'll see it on the field. Hey, wait a minute, Fu Manchu. <laughs> Yes, Mabel. Yes, Mabel. Here's your receipt for the balance. Did the lady like the ring? Oh, I don't know. I hope so. Would you care to look at some wedding rings? But no, thank you. Not till the end of the season. Debbie. Vernon. Look at you. Well, I must apologize for my appearance. What are you doing inside there? Well, if you must know, I... No, no. Don't tell me. I know. I read about Chicago, Vernon. You did? You're not going to try the same thing here. You can't ride on locusts. They've got guards and police. Debbie, what are you talking about? Oh, don't pretend you're so innocent. After all, I'm not a child. Hey, have you seen Kelly? Kelly who? Not Kelly who, King Kelly the pitcher. Excuse me, boss. I need a drink. You can't expect me to keep on worrying about you not knowing where you are or what you're doing. But there's no need to worry. Look, you asked me to trust you and believe in you. Well, that works both ways. If you won't trust me enough to tell me what this is all about, I think we'd better call it quits right now. All right. All right, Debbie, I'll tell you. I suppose I should have told you in the first place. I'm, well, if you must know, I'm a baseball player. Oh, Vernon, tell me the truth. I told you the truth. I'm a baseball player. That's not very funny. If you don't want to tell me, say so. But I told you. Hey, read all about it. Kelly Wendell, Look, yeah. that's you me, Kelly. It. Kelly pitches for today's game. Get your lineup for today's game. I'm Kelly, and I'm pitching this afternoon. Oh, you are. Well, I'm Matt Harry, and I'm going to sell your secret to the highest bidder. Well, Kelly, fancy meeting you here. Are you a ball fan, Dr. Greenleaf? Well, I can't say I am. It's the first game I've seen in years. Well, just sit back and relax. Enjoy yourself. It'll do you good. If you want him to enjoy himself, let's get it settled about this endowment, and then we can all relax. I'm afraid this is going to be an expensive afternoon. Well, I certainly hope so, Mr. Stone. That's three up and three down again for Kelly. He's got that old hot ball hopping in there today, all right. All he's got to do is just keep going like this, and he'll rack up another victory. And he doesn't act like a ball player at all. I'd like you to meet him. Hey, Kelly. Kelly, come here. Looked like a frightened rabbit, didn't he? He's very shy. Nice looking boy, though. I didn't get a very good look at him. But you can't walk out in the middle of the game. That's mutiny. I'm sorry. What please. is this, Kelly? Suddenly you're a prima donna. You have been reading the newspapers? Oh, it isn't that, Jim. It's just I can't go out there again, that's all. I'll slap the biggest, fattest fine on you in history. Well, I'd rather you wouldn't do it, Jimmy, but it won't make any difference if you do. Look at Warm up. He won't get away with us. I'll find him, I'll suspend him, I'll... You got him wrong, Jimmy. He's kind of wacky, but he ain't no prima donna. I don't care what he is. If you get tough with him, there's no telling what he'll do. He might sit down and never pitch again, and he's our only chance for the pennant. Kelly is not indispensable. I know he ain't, but we can't get along without him. Let me go talk to him. Let me see what it's all about. Pull Kelly. No, he quit. He picked up his toys and went home. Where is he? In the locker room. I want to see him right now. You know, this ain't good etiquette, Kelly, to walk off the mound in the middle of a game, especially an important one. 
pitchers ain't supposed to go home until they're invited to. It wasn't just a whim, Monk. I had to. I saw someone in the stands. You mean a copper or something? No, no. Someone I knew. Someone who knew me before I even joined the club. You gotta take that chance. Get us liable to happen any time. I know. And when it does, I've gotta do exactly what I did today. Now, wait a minute. Be reasonable. Kelly! Hey, Kelly! Kelly. Kelly. Where's, where's Kelly? He's gone. I'm standing here talking to him and he's gone. Gone? Gone where? What's the matter with him? Well, I'll tell you, boss. He wanted the afternoon off to go to his grandmother's funeral. How do I know what's the matter with him? Monk? Where have you been? Here? Why ain't you asleep? I've been with Stone and Dolan. They had me on the carpet so long I got fallen arches. You take a walk and I get balled out. They're gonna let you off this time, though. You could thank your Uncle Monk for it. I talked myself blue in the face. If you ever do it again, they're really gonna give it to you good. Say, ain't you even interested? No, it doesn't matter. I'm through anyway. You mean you're gonna quit? You ain't gonna pitch no more? There's no point now. No point? When we're winning a pennant? You can't quit now. You gotta keep pitching. What's the matter? What happened, kid? Was it that guy in the stands? He didn't recognize you. Oh, that's only part of it. I'm worried about my girl. So it was Madame X you met. I think she's gonna find out, too. Why? Why should she? Because I told her. You told her, but you think she's gonna find out. She wouldn't believe me, but she's bound to know, and so is her father. Her father? If he ever learns the truth, I'm really finished. He'll never take me back. And I can't say I blame him after what I said. What'd you say? Oh, I was desperate. I certainly gave him a false impression. I didn't realize what I was doing. I mean, how serious it was. He thought I was doing something entirely different. That's the only reason he let me go. Let you go? Where'd he have you? Oh, it doesn't matter. It's all finished. He's gonna find out, so there's no use going on. You mean because the girl will find out? She may not, Kelly. You gotta wait and see. Wait and see what? Well, if she gets any idea you ain't ribbing her, what'll she do? She'll come out to the first game, see her for herself. It figures, doesn't it? Yes, you're right, Monk. That's just why I'm not going to pitch. Oh, why did I say that? I'm making it worse and worse. You got to keep pitching. You can't quit now. You got to think of us, too, you know? You got to give us a break. We got a chance to win a pennant in the World Series. That means something, too. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose so. Suppose so? Mabel, now neither of us gets any sleep. Nosy, Debbie, but would you mind telling me what you're doing? Oh, just reading the paper, Father. You're certainly doing a thorough job of it, reading the sports page of the magnifying glass. Oh, I was interested in a wild statement someone made. You aren't becoming a sports fan, are you? No, I don't think so. But there's just an outside chance. Kelly pitching? Yeah. Two out. Hank Moore at bat. Come on, fan him, Kelly. Play ball, what are you looking for, a process server? I'm looking for a dame. If she comes, I gotta talk to her first. A dame? Ain't you getting pretty old for that? It's really burning. 
I told you, lady, he's Kelly. So did he. But I didn't believe him. That's certainly a blow for Jimmy Dolan. Lanigan is the only catcher that's worked with Kelly all season. If he's out of there, there's no telling what may happen. You fix him up, Doc? Sure. He'll be all right. Look, Monk, don't be foolish. If it's too painful, don't... Nah, yeah, didn't you hear? It don't hurt a bit. They just told me. You have to use those splints? What else? I mean, do they have to be wood? What do you want them made of, mother of pearl? Monk, look, I don't think you better try oh, it. quit worrying, will you? This ain't the first split finger I ever had. I know, but those splints... Kelly, you worry about the pitching, I'll worry about the catching. Somebody else catch. What, and let you down, kid? Come on. Jupiter, I'm saying things. You see, Monk, I was afraid it of ain't the... me finger, it's me eyes. Cockeyed oh! son of a sea cook. Get out of there, Monk. No, but Jimmy... You can't even pick him up after you drop well, him. it isn't his fault, Jimmy. Don't really... worry. He'll get his purple heart later. Go get that x-ray, Monk. Callahan catching. Callahan catching for St. Louis! Mr. Kelly, I'm a friend of his. I'm sorry, lady. You won't be able to go up there. All the boys will be in the shower. Oh. Well, I'll wait. Right. Hey, you, Madam X. You're Kelly's girl, ain't you? Yes. Oh, wait, I want to see you. Come on, no, you don't jump in Jupiter. It's lucky I seen you. Come on, sister. Why? What's the matter? Don't ask no questions, honey. Just get out of here. Come on. I feel like you and me's been living together for a long time, honey. I see you the first thing every morning and the last thing every night. You do? Yeah, Kelly's got your picture right in the middle of the dresser. I'm Lanigan, Kelly's catcher, roommate, bodyguard, and everything else. Also his pal. I'm for the guy, see? That's why I shanghaied you. I don't quite understand. Well, if he knew you or anybody else was watching him, he'd walk right out of the ballpark. He'd done it the other day. Oh. Well, that must have been the day Dad was there. He's liable to walk out altogether, and if he blows or quits, we're dead, and so is he. You don't want to hurt the guy just when he's right on top. But do you? Oh, no. Of course not. Well, then come to the game, see? Bring your friends. I'll even send you passes, only don't let Kelly see you. Oh, I'll sit way up in the father's corner. You're not sore at the guy? Oh, no. But it is quite a shock to fall in love with a college professor and have him turn out to be a big league pitcher. <laughs> so that's what he is, a professor. Well, I'll be. <laughs> Are you surprised? I certainly am, because that's exactly what I thought he was. You know, it seems so fantastic. I only came to the game today to make sure. But after I got over the shock, I found myself rooting for Vernon like mad. I think it's wonderful. Vernon? So that's what his name is? <laughs> oh. Maybe I shouldn't have told him. No, no, no. Leave us have no secrets, you and me. All right. This Kelly of Vernon is quite a character, but he can pick dames. <laughs> you know, young lady, I could fall in love with you myself very easy. <laughs> Lady, 
One run and we have the pennant. Only we're not going to get it this inning. Why not? Because the tail end of the batting order is up. Lanigan and then Kelly. Relax, kid. I'm going to win this one for you. Debbie, where have you been? St. Louis. Again? Deborah, you're not a child, but all these mysterious trips, I can't help but worry. Mother, if you promise not to tell. Yes? Well. Both managers are starting their ace pitches for the first game of the series. Here are the batteries. It's Keats and Davina for New York, St. Louis, Kelly and Lanigan. It seems so incredible. I can hardly believe it. What do you think of it, Joe? I think it's outrageous that he never pitched on the varsity. Now we're right up to the end of the fifth game here in New York, and it's still anybody's series. Talk about a neck and neck and tight race. How about this one? The series tied two games all. First of the ninth, St. Louis has a two-run lead. Steiner's up. Tally stretches. Steiner swings and misses. Strike one. And a board, Kelly. Nice going, Professor. <laughs> professor? Sure, don't you know who Kelly is? <laughs> and Steiner goes down swinging. That's the game, folks. Kelly's done it again. Vernon yeah! <laughs> won again! Who? Vernon. Vernon is King Kelly. What? Monk, mm. Monk, tell me to get up. Yeah. <clears throat> hey, Monk, hmm? you've been using my hair tonic? Hmm? Hair tonic? Oh, yeah, I'm growing a whole new crop, ain't you noticed? Take a bottle out of my suitcase? Oh, yeah, I meant to tell you. I seen it in there last week. I didn't think you'd mind. It's my last bottle. What'd you do with it? Give it to Jimmy. He's getting a little thin on top, you know. Oh, uh, I gotta go get it. What for? You're wearing a cap. Jumping Jupiter. What a character.
Come in. Oh, Jimmy, I'm sorry to bother you, but I... Oh, it's you, Kelly. Must be a lot of electricity in the air, the way my hair is behaving. Well, I, I wanted to talk to you, Jimmy. What's on your mind? Well, it's the hair tonic. What? The hair tonic. Did Monk give you a bottle of my hair tonic? Oh, yeah. I just tried it. I was losing a few. Monk said it'd grow hair in a billiard ball. Kind of an insult. Well, you see, it's a very rare solution, and I can't duplicate it. Okay, I'm willing to pay for it. How much do you want? Well, no, no. It isn't that. It's my last bottle, and I, and I need it. You need it? What for? You gonna play for the House of David? No, no. It's a little idiosyncrasy of mine, a sort of a superstition, and especially today, you know. Well, I've heard of everything from a rabbit's foot to a elk's tooth, but hair tonic, that's a new one. Please, Jimmy. Have you got it? Yeah, yeah. Where did I put it? Oh, here it is on the top. Oh. First half of the eighth, fans. St. Louis still trailing six to five. But something's happened to Kelly. He's not himself today. Maybe it's the strain. After all, this game means the series. He's been in trouble a couple of times, but those St. Louis boys have come back strong. It's another hit for Hopkins, and Marconi scores. It's New York 7, St. Louis 5. There's two out, but Kelly's in real trouble again. Where's the old Hop kid? I haven't got any more, Monk. It's gone. Okay, kid, steady down, steady down. Let them hit a few. There's seven men behind you. They can handle it. They're a great ball club. Well, they better be. and New York has a two-run lead. Good worry in this ball game ain't over yet. I wish it were. All right, kid, all right. Your hop ain't working. You and I know it, but them batters don't. You gotta use psychology. It's gonna take more than psychology. No, it ain't, kid. You gotta keep bluffing all the time. See, you gotta go out there, look in this cocky... Oh, boy, are you? You know, if I was intelligent, I'd go to Jimmy and ask him to relieve me. But I'm not gonna do it. I hope he lets me stay, because I want to go Atta out there boy, and see if I can... Now you're talking. Still in this old ball game, the tying run is on second. If I don't win, I'm gonna go down trying. And even if we do lose, we get quit talking about losing. We got two men on. What's eating you, Kelly? I'm just rubbing your head for luck, Mark. And Davis is out at first. That's two down for St. Louis, and Stevens is up. I'm leaving you in. It's your game to win or lose. 
All you got to do is hope. Good luck, Jimmy. Jimmy. Yes, sir. You leaving him in? Yeah. I'm going to gamble. Jimmy's going to leave him in. He's gambling everything on King Kelly. It's the first of the night, and Kelly is facing the top of the New York batting order. You mean to say St. Louis is ahead again? Yes, Mother. Eight to seven. Oh. Now Vernon can only hold. Two more men, the game is over. But that's an awful big if right now. What a game, ladies and gentlemen, what a game. New York's got the tying run on first, and Aaron is up. Game, ladies and gentlemen. Kelly is saved again, but he's grimly hanging on to that one run lead. There's two out now, a man on second, and Blockbuster Marks comes to bat. He's gotten three hits off Kelly this afternoon, and this is your game right here, folks. you a crackpot. All I can say is, I wish I had a dozen crackpots like you. Well, thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. <laughs> hey, that hand looks bad. How's it feel? Well, it's, it's rather painful. I thought so. Come on, we'd better get that x-ray. If he says there's anything wrong with Kelly's pitching hand, I'm going to crown him. How's it, Doc? I'm afraid it's serious. Serious, it can't be. Can't you do something? Listen, Doc, this kid's the greatest pitcher in baseball. Just as I feared. There's not only a fracture, the first phalanx of the second finger, but a linear fracture of the metacarpal bone extending into the joint. What's all this mean, Doc? Can't you say it in English? It means he's through. For good, huh? Yes. How's it feel, kid? Oh, it's not too bad. What about the x-rays? Well, the doc, oh, he made with a lot of mumbo-jumbo. You know how those guys are. And what did he say? Listen, Kelly, I want to tell you something. I've been playing ball since Hector was a pup, but what's it got me? I mean, it don't matter how long you're up there, it's what you do. Oh, you've done all right, Monk. I'm talking about you, Kelly. You had a season, kid, a season like nobody ever had before. Well, I guess I was lucky. But... Lucky? You're the greatest pitcher in baseball, Kelly, and don't let nobody ever tell you different. I've seen them all, and I know. Well, you could pitch for 20 years and never do no better. You've done it all, kid. You know, you got nothing to look forward to. What's this all about? So what's it matter if you pitch for one year or for 20? None of us is indestructible. We all got to quit sometime. What did the doctor say, Monk? Well, that's what I'm trying to tell you. He says you're all washed up, kid. He said you ain't going to pitch no more. He did? Well, I never dreamt my career would end this way. You and me both, kid, and I ain't never going to forget it. 
I'm going to spend the rest of my life going around bragging that King Kelly was my roommate. I'm going through with my pal. Well, I guess this is goodbye, eh, kid? Oh, just for the time being, Monk. I hope so. I mean, leave me here from you, Kelly. What do you say? Oh, sure, of course. What do you figure you're going to do, kid? Well, I don't know. I... I'd like to get my old job back, but I don't think there's much chance of that. There ain't, huh? But after the way I left and what I've been doing since, I suppose the best thing I should do is go back and make a clean breast of the whole thing. And when I do... Well, Jumpin' Jubilee ain't murdered nobody or nothing. All you've done was play pool. I know. I only did it to get enough money to marry my girl, but even so, I haven't much hope. But they ought to know that. I don't get it. Don't make no sense to me. A lot of things don't make sense, Monk. I was a chemistry teacher. I can tell you that now. And the sum of money I received for teaching science to the youth of this state for an entire year was a little less than I got in a single afternoon for tossing a five-ounce sphere past a young man holding a wooden stick. But that ain't right, Kelly. If it weren't for the professors teaching the kids, everybody turned out to be dumb clucks. Oh, boy. Like me. <laughs> You're doing all right. I hope you keep on. Thanks, kid. Well, I guess I better be moving. Yeah, I guess you better. How's the hand, Jim? Oh, it's fine, just fine. I, You know, I I never had very many friends, Monk, and you've been a real one. You've done a lot for me, and I just want to say that... I just don't know how to say what I want to say. <laughs> Neither do I. You leave us not try. All right, uh, I'll get in touch with you as soon as I get things straightened out. Yeah, do that, Kelly. I'm going to miss you, kid. I hate to see you going. Me too. Well, go on. Get in the train, Kelly. Oh, so long. And stay out of Mabel. Yeah. Where you get off, we're coming in now. Oh, oh thank you. Everybody knows? Oh, of course. And we've all been rooting for you like mad. Vernon, that catch was... Oh, your hand. Does it hurt very much? Oh, no, Debbie, no. Oh, it's terrible. Monk said you'd never pitch again. Monk? Yes, he called. Oh, we're pals, Vernon. He even got us tickets for the game. Well, what about your father? I suppose he knows, too. Yes, Vernon, I know all about it, too. We all know, Vernon. We all know. Oh, Dr. Greenleaf, if I wanted to talk to you, to explain, I mean, about my old job, do you think there's any chance? I'm afraid not, Vernon. That's what I thought. See, Mr. Stone has given us the money for the research laboratory. You're the only man he let us put in as director. <laughs> Hello, boy, Mr. <laughs> Kelly, you were terrific. Yes, sir, Professor, you sure put that methyl ethyl propylene butyl on that ball. <laughs> <laughs>